So I've been doing a lot of AMD content lately, but that's because AMD is incredibly interesting right now. However, NVIDIA will be interesting very soon, I believe. And it's because they have to be to fend off the APU future. Um, and this APU future is going to come quicker than a lot of people expect. The fact of the matter is, due to Amdahl's law, I don't think we're really going to scale much past 8,000 stream processors in the next 10 years. Don't get me wrong, if we got down to 1 nanometer and it was basically free to keep the graphics card under 100 watts and go to like 16,000 SPs, I think they might do that. But it's not going to be a priority anymore. And in fact, because it's not a priority, because there's other ways to make a big graphics card strong, I still doubt they would even do that if they had cards already under 100 watts, because there's always more you can do. Now, what more can you do? Well, ASICs, FPGAs, the, either or, right? ASICs would be better, but more buggy and require more to the metal programming for games and FPGAs could kind of just work and using these for once you get 8,000 stream processors once you get an 8,000 stream processor graphics card down to like under 150 watts which trust me that will happen in about five years you should start considering freeing up those stream processors to only do what they have to by putting an FPGA or, if you can, an ASIC that handles just the ray tracing. You know, I'm not talking about semi-general purpose tensor cores and RT cores. I'm talking about literally all this does is ray tracing in DirectX games. That's what you want to put on there. And maybe you'll use 20 watts. And then you want to do one for anti-aliasing. In fact, there are HDMI cables that add anti-aliasing a small amount of it. To about the equivalent, I believe, of Times 2 MSAA for free performance. You know, these are expensive HDMI cords. A lot of them need to be powered via USB. But, you know, that means you're, they're using 5 to 10 watts to give you Times 2 MSAA. And a graphics card uses much more than that when you turn it up. That wants, you want to put one of those on there. And then you also want to probably put a tessellation ASIC, right? So that you're not wasting cycles bogging down your stream processors doing that and that's what's coming now let me take you to a chart here to kind of illustrate why nvidia has to do this and why amd wants to move to smaller process nodes as fast as possible all right so let's take a look at this chart i made here now as usual the future is not exact these are rough estimates based on projections given by samsung who i do believe nvidia wants to go with for their next few nodes and tsmc for amd these are estimates to get my point across they're not you know but i think they're gonna do that pretty well and be accurate enough to what we will see we're stopping at 8,000 sps and i actually think we're stopping probably around 40 teraflops in the next few years which is actually kind of interesting to me because i at least remember sweeney talking about how his rough estimate for photorealism was 40 teraflops so i wonder i always thought that was just him kind of guessing you know well we can get here so what three times that you know but it seems like maybe he put more thought into it than I realized back then. Anyways, though, let's get started here. So, of course, starting off in the 2018-19 time frame, we have the MI60, which I am going to use. That is, for now, AMD's strongest gaming card. Navi 20 is not expected to come out till next year. So, this is what it is. And you can't get it for gaming, but, you know, I'm comparing it to the Titan RTX anyway, so... You know, we have, you know, the Titan RTX. It's about, if they really went all out on an MI60 gaming version that was water-cooled, I'm sure they could actually get pretty close to the 2080 Ti. But regardless, yeah, the RTX will always be like 20% stronger than this. Okay, well, let's go to 2020. And actually, AMD's really just using a little extra die space to... Uh, add more ROPs, change around the, how the dies configure. They're not adding more stream processors. So, and I do think NVIDIA will have a new Turing refresh next year on 12 nanometer. I don't think they'll beat a 7 nanometer EOV yet, but I could certainly be wrong. Either way, I kind of am just showing this because it's like, 
Well, AMD is not going above 4096, so let's at least compare it to if NVIDIA ever did a full 12 nanometer lineup instead of sandbagging, like, because they control the top of the market. This is where we basically are hypothetically right now. This is the hypothetical comparison between NVIDIA, if they went all out, and AMD, if Navi 20 did really well, right? This is what it would look like. NVIDIA would be probably about 20% stronger than Big Navi. Uh, and that's now. But let's continue to 2021 and assume now that AMD goes to the 6 nanometer EUV. They skip the 7 nanometer plus. And NVIDIA goes to Samsung 7 nanometer EUV, which actually does go up to 858 millimeter squared. That's why I think they will go with Samsung because they want to make massive dies. But the first one won't be the completely massive. It'll probably be about this big. And... I don't know how the performance will shake out. I basically just made this 50% bigger to make a big die on TSMC's process. You know, this is where they're basically tied. I put after GCN, and that's what this will stand for. Whatever comes after GCN, I think they can match a die shrunk bigger turn. I really do. So let's say they're tied here, right? But then NVIDIA goes all out. And they go to 8192. This is where Amdahl's Law pretty much stops us. This would bring us near photorealistic graphics, Okay. And it would be a gigantic die, just like Turing was. And it would probably crush AMD in performance, but man, would these be expensive graphics cards. This is what I've talked about before, where we're looking at, you know, $3,500 Titan Amperes, something ridiculous like that, you know. And AMD, on the other hand, if they jumped from here to here and did a die shrink, they're actually getting a little smaller. And this is AMD's strategy. AMD wants to get these as small as possible. And it'll become clear as we continue. So let's do that. Okay, so NVIDIA has to stop here. Uh, all right. Well, let's say they die shrink, right? After two generations on Samsung 7 nanometer, they die shrink all the way down to five. All right, they're getting smaller, but this is still a massive die. They'll need to sell for a lot of money. AMD doesn't care. They're just going to do a refresh with it, a slight overclock in 2023. And maybe they'll add some new uh, features to make it a little bigger. But they're smaller than NVIDIA. And they're staying smaller. And here we are. This is where you can see the convergence. This is where you can see it's getting harder and harder for NVIDIA to just buy a bigger die. They really can't anymore because you got to stop at 8192. doesn't matter if they're on... Similar processes. This is, I'm sure they can get it clocked faster than AMD if they want to because of all their R&D spending. But this is it. They're pretty much even now. That, and they're using some of their die space for ray tracing already. So let's continue even further. Well, I think AMD, this is where AMD goes. We did it. We got to the, about the max performance we're going to get. Now let's make this sucker easier to fit in APUs. And so they just start die shrinking. And all of a sudden we're down. I'm saying they literally almost don't increase the clock speed at all. Like maybe a 10% increase by going down a huge node. And they just make this smaller. Now this is almost a, Polar, a big Polaris sized die that gives you photorealistic graphics and uses under 200 watts. They could fit this into some expensive larger APUs. It wouldn't be quite small enough to fit into compact laptops, but it would be pretty close. This is it. Then they go to 3 nanometer plus. Again, maybe slight performance increases, but they're putting most of their effort into reducing power usage. And NVIDIA is basically just forced... To die shrink and add as much as they can to the ray tracing capabilities, but pretty soon they would have to do what I show here, and here's why. Once AMD gets below 3 nanometer, which I do believe this is about where it will stop, but that's good enough for them, AMD can just make this an APU. They can make a photorealistic APU in around 2025, 2026, Instead of trying to make this giant thing that doesn't scale anymore due to Amdahl's law. This is what AMD wants. They want to be able to put a photorealistic graphics card in five, year, five to seven years from now in their $200 APUs. And force NVIDIA to just make gigantic dies that are probably only 
you know, up to 50% stronger for 10 times the price. This is what AMD is betting on long term right now. And this is when NVIDIA needs to do this. The, they have a decision. Either they can try the shadiest tricks in the business to try to, you know, get more and more games works. But I, I just don't think that would be enough. They need to start die stacking ASICs, one for ray tracing, one for AA, one for tessellation. Um, let's see, one, maybe one a small one for anastrophic filtering. They need to figure out what does every game use and start adding 10 watt ASICs and or FPGAs to the board. And this is where, when we're going to get into a bizarre scenario, in my opinion. That bizarre scenario is one where you have complete reliance on APIs for NVIDIA to be able to justify their higher prices. Like if you're using DirectX, who knows, we'll be on 13, 14 by them. You know, maybe a NVIDIA can make these GamesWorks packages where they program the ASICs for each game for the developers. In this scenario, you'll have AMD selling like a, I don't know, honestly in seven years, I do think we'll have like a 24 core APU with a built-in near photorealism uh, graphics card that for only about 300 bucks does all you need and only uses about 150 watts total. You know, that is going to be a killer deal. And NVIDIA is going to say, no, 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 you don't want to spend $300 on this. You want to get the AMD or Intel processor without a graphics card built in for $200. And then you want to get our $500 or $1,000 more likely graphics card that in every API, Vulkan, you know, um, DirectX 12 and, you know, what have you, maybe new APIs, they will say, no, you want to use our graphics card that's always 20% stronger. And I know, I know, ours doesn't use 150 watts, ours use 200 watts. But if you're using a GamesWorks title, AA, tessellation, ray tracing, all that's turned on for free. And if you turn up all of these luxury features, as this is a luxury graphics card, my people, this will give you an experience AMD can't give you. I know we're only 20% stronger in AMD-sponsored titles while using double the energy and costing five times as much. But in our titles, and NVIDIA will pay they will do for free programming as many games as possible. This stuff, you get free AA and all this other stuff. That is going to be really weird to see benchmarks where AMD wins with a card a fifth as expensive, but then you go to another game and NVIDIA is just like otherworldly more powerful if you turn up a bunch of features. It's kind of what's happening now, but it'll be much more exaggerated. But this has a lot of potential weaknesses and downsides for NVIDIA as well. And that's that AMD could very easily start stacking their own micro ASICs that consoles use. And so developers don't want to bother with NVIDIA. And that's what NVIDIA's weakness is here. That they really need to worry about if they go in this direction. Is that ASICs really only work if you program to the metal. And so... AMD could quite easily work with a few developers to nuke performance in this or add their own version that consoles also use. So I don't know, but I don't know if it'll be enough. I could easily see NVIDIA for free programming half of the games for these developers to get this massive performance lead. And in my opinion, that's really their only alternative. AMD's trying to box NVIDIA out of the market, but NVIDIA can somewhat stop this and give us some really interesting powerful architectures if they die stack ASICs or even just you know chiplet a bunch of ASICs together that's really all they can do it has weaknesses but it would bring massive performance and that's something people need to start thinking about just in general as we hit the limits of Amdahl's law as we get to a point where on desktop it doesn't make any more sense for a 32 core processor and an 8000 SP graphics card we're gonna have to start asking ourselves what do we do every day, nay, every minute on this PC that we could use an FPGA or ASIC to handle for us? What could we do? And we're going to have to start having these stacked APUs and other little SOCs all over that handle different things. Because that's really the way to scale performance past these limiting laws that we're running into soon. 
Well, tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm sure a lot of you would totally buy that NVIDIA graphics card if it let you turn on AA ray tracing, tessellation, anastrophic filtering to the max without getting any performance loss. You would probably happily pay that much more money than an AMD efficient APU, wouldn't you? Or maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you don't need that. Maybe you just want clean 8K 120Hz graphics that don't have the flashiest features, but at least are smooth, right? That's kind of what I lean towards personally. But then again, I don't know. Maybe NVIDIA could convince me. Please like the video if you did. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Share this. I haven't seen anyone else talk about how I NVIDIA could perhaps counter AMD's APU future without just basically saying NVIDIA do monopoly stuff. No, there's legitimate engineering endeavors they can take to try to beat a APUs or at least justify their higher price points. And of course, talk with me after the video if you subscribe to my Patreon. Thank you.